the podcast. And if you want to use backward design effectively, you must be aware of the end at the beginning. What's going on? You started at the end. I thought you were supposed to be telling us about backward design, not confusing us. There is method in my madness. Let's remind the beginning to learn about backward design. I began this podcast at the end of an instructional design conference, and now I'm beginning to explain backward design to you, the listener. So what is backward design? Stephen R. Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People states, to begin with the end... Hello. Okay, you get the idea that the whole idea is to, is to that they enjoy doing what they're doing, but at the same stage, um, they're making it more meaningful for the others. So the use of the vodcast to actually do that, um, and they all had eight different instructional design theories to to present, um, and 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 they did so uh, um, in, in that format. The Hello, is, my name is Deirdre Flood, and what uh, in. They all have to, for their literature review in the, in the online learning environment uh, module, um, as part of that module, as a, as a way, as a mini assignment that they have to do is to do, a, a, it's not a, it's an mp3 file as opposed to a podcast, it's not a feed, but they have to do an mp3 file on an article that they've read. So suddenly at, at the end of the, of the module, uh, there will be 40 um, very uh, different um, 40 different uh, articles there for if you want to put them in the car on a CD player. So Hello, my so name is the... Deirdre Flood and welcome to this podcast. This mini literature review is drawn from a book published in June 2010 titled Educational Video Exploring the Complex Relationship Between Production, Educational Use and Audience. The author is Dr. Alberto Ramirez Martinel and the book can be purchased from Amazon and a link will be provided with the script accompanying this podcast. Ramirez Martinel used a participatory action research approach to conduct a series of studies in various. And you get the idea. The whole idea then would be that there would be collaboration. They could people could go up and say, "Oh God, that's an interesting article. I might um, uh, use that." So there's 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 a pool of forty articles written all together. So do two each. Um, okay, this year we just uh, we started. We tried animation, and we've learned an awful lot, including me. It's been great. Um, and they also learned, I think one of the biggest lessons they learned last week was just to have confidence in their own ability uh, and that, that sometimes the expert is, is not always on the outside. And also just even that different people have different standards, you know, in terms of, um, you, you know, what you might, your expectation and to be clear about that, you know. Um, there was a lovely, lovely girl who came in last week for the animation, but her expectation and maybe ours were, were two different a different standard with uh, two different uh, levels, so that, that, that was important just to know. Um, I suppose the whole idea of standards uh, that we talk about and, and excellence as well in that in that area, in any area. And um, also just that that along that line, that part of their um, assignment would be that they would have to create a, a, a poster for a conference, a conference poster. Now I only this is one that, I did, that that we did ourselves. For own, I I didn't. There's loads of them that the students have, but I I, um, I didn't. I just grabbed this one because it um, gives an idea of what we're doing. But theirs is the same as that as well. Um, so the poster that they would see that like it's not just something that they're just because they're students that they that the knowledge isn't um, out there that they have to be finished their course. It also helps them focus on having an abstract, an introduction, middle and end um, for their um, thesis. We, I work also with the Career Guidance Group, and I have them for four weeks, four Saturdays, for, for uh, nine o'clock until five every, yeah, for four weeks. And we do blogs, and we've been doing blogs for the last four years, but it's on an area um, of interest to them in their own workplace. Um, and the whole idea there would be that they would actually have a pool, of, when they leave the college, that they would actually have a pool of resources uh, around that whole. So at this stage, I read about 80 blogs built up, uh, around different areas, because every year I'd give, I make sure that there's no duplication, so there's about 80 blogs around the whole area of career guidance and uh, that they actually share with each other um, in that way. Okay, um, and these are people actually that, like, like you know, Teresa, your, your group, um, the whole idea would be 
they, they, they're very fearful when they come in first. And that's where the journals come in, that I actually intercept or I can, I can diff, you know, diffuse any anxiety or even just you know, to try and make sure that they're enjoying what they're doing or that they're, they allay any fears or anxieties that they may have. Um, and, and it aids that process. Okay, just there are my values of care and empathy. Um, I use Skype um, and I record the Skype sessions then and even share the screens to be able to show the students um, you know, give them advice or show them what they're, you know, in terms of visual literacy, what they can change and go through things. And I have examples and evidence of that feedback. Because for me, feedback, as I said earlier on, is very important, it's crucial, and it can be just, it can come at the right, at the, at the, at a critical time uh, to help you in the process and actually to avert or allay any fears that you might, might have um, and help the student to enjoy or feel in their element as they're learning. Um, there are just the various different, um, the, the, um, how I find <coughs> journals and how I find journals helpful. I suppose it really is important to me that the students enjoy what they do. And I, I think that if the whole idea of journals is that if they have to write a journal every week in the initial stages, because I suppose at the latter stages we know why we should be writing journals to actually uh, give us evidence for our learning and to be able to, to in our in our thesis and our in our work to show evidence but in the initial stages they don't know that so i want them to get into that whole idea of, of avoiding being in their head but if they have to write it and i cut it off every week which is a bit like hitler but at the same stage uh, it, it means that they'll never fall far behind that they actually be um that we just uh, one week behind if, if they don't actually do their journal and it means that they come back up to me and say listen sorry I didn't get a chance to do my journal can you open it again which they very they, they don't they don't do but if they do it's not that I won't open it but it means that they keep on top of their work all the time it's safe I'm able to go in it helps them in terms of their um, you know their, their writing process there's, there's so many valuable um, reasons that, that um, to use journals and that's just just a couple of pointers there Okay, um, as I said, I've mentioned these already, um, you know, the different people and the use of comics, you know, okay, and then um, <laughs> Zanders and Zanders, the art of possibility, as I said, mentioned earlier on, um, she hits me, Halley, the optimum flow. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to admit I only put it in there just a minute ago. <laughs> okay. And um oh Jesus, are you coming in again? <laughs> yeah, okay. And then the whole idea of, of um the different challenges, you know, of turning the camera on. I really do find sometimes that that, that kind of it can be very invasive. Uh, and it can take away from now. I know what you're saying, um, Matt, about just having the camera there all the time. But sometimes even just getting, you, you, need to, you seem to be always kind of running and trying to catch up because you, to, you're given so many times. And I haven't, I'm not prioritizing actually myself in the whole process because I'm saying, oh God, well of course they're more important because I have to try and get all everything done. So it's, 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 it's coming back to myself and saying, okay, well, which is a priority? And I find that really hard, I, I really do, um, all together. And that was just my last slide. That's all. Okay. Very good. Now, any questions? You want to show? Yeah. Have it. Um, this, these are all the different students that I was supervising because I find it's easier to to supervise a bigger group because you're, there's more momentum than maybe one or two, you know, but in terms of just even the direction they're going and, and, and whatever. But this year in particular, um, they, uh, what I did was they, ha they did their, their video and it was 50% and then the other, um, their, their writing was 50% as well. But the actual video, they had to come in and present um, to actually to the extra this year. And I recorded that, but then I, I, I edited in footage of what, of what they were talking about, so made it come alive than just rather than an ordinary. Um, and I did, it was time consuming, um, and I haven't them all finished yet, but it means that it's a resource there for the students that are this year to be able to look 